Hey, it's Katrina Sawa here. I was just on a summit speaking about speaking, the fastest path to cash. And one of the hot topics that came up in the breakout after I spoke was about speaker sheets. And so I thought I'd just give a, a few tips about doing your speaker sheet, one sheet, uh, and what my take is on it. And I've been a speaker booker for 16 years now. So I book speakers on live in-person stages at conferences and events. Uh, and panelists, and also virtual events and summits. Um, and so I come from that perspective. Uh, first off, there's three times, three types of ways to speak, right? Speaking for free, uh, where you hopefully get leads from the audience. You, you know, you make them want what you've got. And so they want more, either to download a free thing or come and talk to you, right? Or you can speak and sell, of course. Uh, and then there's a uh, paid speaking, which a lot of people want to get paid to speak, but it's not as uh, easy as a free speak speech, obviously, to get booked. Um, but it's totally doable. You just have to have the right strategy, different strategies and marketing to uh, get free speaking versus paid speaking, by the way. And some people go after paid speaking because they think they're going to make more money from it. Because why would I do a free speak when I can get paid when you can make tens of thousands of dollars from free speaking. So I'm just like, I want to dispel that myth there too. And then the third type of speaking is uh, pay to play, where you pay to speak on someone's stages. And I have paid up to $5,000 to speak on someone's stage. I've paid 3,500 to speak on a different stage. I've paid numerous times, like a couple, two or three or $500 to speak on virtual summits and stages. Uh, I paid to be in a mastermind to get on stages before uh, for an annual group. Um, I've paid in many ways to be on stages and it is so lucrative because it really just sets you up uh, in the right place. If the person who's doing the stick has the stage, is a good marketer though. They have to be good at marketing uh, and getting the audience, right? Because that's why we pay to be on stages. But uh, so when do you need a speaker sheet or a one sheet, right? Well, um, my take on it, and I've been speaking for 25 years uh, in my own business, but also previous jobs, is I've never really had a glossy one sheet uh, because I'm not looking for paid speaking gigs. Uh, if you are looking for paid speaking gigs and you are going to send something in the mail, like a media kit, like a speaker kit, right? With your book and a glossy one sheet, two-sided full color glossy speaker sheet of you. Uh, that's when you might need what what's called a one sheet, especially a really nicely designed, graphically designed printed one sheet in, you know, you can have PDF form too, but those kinds of one sheets are not helpful for the speaker booker who needs to market your talk. Most of those glossy one sheets uh, or PDFs do not have your full topic description. They just have maybe your talk title and a couple bullet points of what someone's going to learn. They might have testimonials. They might have your bio. Sure. It's not always easy to copy and paste. And I'm pretty techie. I'm just saying I'm pretty techie. And it's not always easy to copy and paste from a PDF or especially you can't copy and paste. And I'm not going to retype everything. I want you to send me your information in a Word doc so I can copy and paste it to the web page where I'm going to promote your talk or the, put you on on the event, right? I want the... Um, I want you to fill in the form if I have an online form for you to apply to speak. And so all the information is there so I can have it in my CRM, right? Or I can print out a list of all the speakers and all their details in a spreadsheet. As the speaker booker, that's what I want. You have to make it easy for me to do that. So please don't make it hard. Please don't put, in, put very little information in a PDF or something the, and then email it to me and like, here you go. Well, that's not going to help me. I'm going to need way more information. So really always think about the speaker booker and what they need to do to market your talk. Now, you can still have a nice glossy one sheet. Uh, you can, If you do exhibitor booths or you speak and you have tables in the back of the room, you can put them out there. There might be other speaker bookers who take one in the room. That's fine. You can certainly mail them, like I said. Typically, though, we just need a, a Word document where we keep all of our talks, talk titles, descriptions, bullet points of what people are going to learn, where we keep our various bios, because you might need more than one bio, uh, and where we keep questions people might want to ask us, right? Because uh, on a podcast, especially, 
they a lot of times will ask you, hey, do you have 10 questions that you might want me to ask you? And they intermix that with their own uh, interviewing uh, skills. Uh, so it's good to have some questions. It's good to put some pictures in there and all your links to all your social or your websites, all the links for contacting you um, need to be in that speaker sheet. Uh, mine actually has grown to about 17 pages, my speaker sheet, and it's in Word. I can make it a PDF and I actually stick it on my website as a PDF just to make it easier for some people to download, but I have it in Word. And if somebody asks me to send them like, well, what do you speak on? I'm like, I'll send them that, right? And that has everything they need and they can pick which topic. I have like 12 topics on there. You don't have to have 12 topics, have one or two or three at the most is all you really need. Um, and you can do a similar talk actually with different talk titles, by the way, that catch different uh, attention strategies. So um, the speaker sheet is, it's not, I don't call it a one sheet. I call it your speaker sheet because it shouldn't be just one page unless you really want to go out and get on a bunch of podcasts. Now, podcasters like one sheet. They literally like one but a Word document with all your links and your short bio and how you want to be uh, titled yourself, your you know your name and your title, how you want to be sh um, displayed on their website uh, in the show notes and stuff like that. So yes. You might need a couple different versions of this, but that's my take on one sheets and speaker sheets and hope this is helpful. And by the way, something that most of the people in the room today when I spoke uh, did not have and was one of the biggest mistakes I see if you're trying to speak more, put a speaker page on your website. Please call it speaking keynotes or book me to speak or something. We don't know you're a speaker. We don't know to book you unless you have a speaker page. You have to use your website as the hub of your business and I'm telling you, more people will be interested if we just know that you speak. So, and by the way, I am still looking for a few panelists for my Business Reimagine conference. If you are, uh, if you do speak on either marketing, branding, social media of some sort, uh, follow up, uh, networking, uh, website stuff, SEO, any of those types of things that people use to le get leads or uh, clients. Or you, I have one spot left on my financial and wealth management panel as well. So I'm looking for a couple panelists still. Uh, if you go to jumpstartyourbiznow.com, that's my website where you can actually get more speaker information uh, and look at my speaker page. But if you do forward slash call for speakers, you'll find the opportunities there to speak at the Business Reimagine Conference, which is happening in January in Northern California by Sacramento. The ticket sales are open now. You can get in for 77 bucks. So come to, it's a two or three day event, depending on what ticket you buy. And I would love to see you there. And you can learn so much more about all the things to grow and scale your business. So I hope to see you there. Bye everyone.